my patients who've had optic neuritis are not always happy. And they come back to see me and I have them read the eye chart, which is the chart with the big E, where there's a bright black letter and a bright background and they're 2025 and 2020. But they tell me their vision's not right. And what are they describing to us? So one of the things we're so used to in ophthalmology is testing what's known as high contrast visual acuity. And that's just what you've described. Our charts are actually computerized now. So it's a bold black letter on a white background. And, um, you know, when I was in training, we had projectors. You couldn't even alter that. <laughs> if the projector bulb was a little bit dim, the contrast mm -hmm. was a little bit worse. But short of that, we were testing high contrast visual acuity, which is often very good in patients who recover from optic neuritis. The problem is if you ask them, hey, if you cover one or the other eye, do you notice a difference? And they say, of course I do. Things are washed out with the affected eye. Colors are not the same. Contrast is not the same. Things look more dim with that eye. And this is one of the things that can be overlooked just by assessing high contrast visual acuity. Yeah, uh, this is uh, excellent work uh, done by Laura Balser primarily uh, now at uh, New York University Langone Medical Center. And Laura has taught us a lot about this. And what's very interesting too is that this low contrast acuity uh, anatomically is localized to the retinal ganglion cells. So uh, someday going forward, as Rod was saying, uh, this boundary between the optic nerve and retina may dissolve as we learn that if you have inflammation of the nerve, there is secondary effects on the retina as well as perhaps secondary effects on the brain. So there's uh, not a firewall here between these structures, and we have to keep thinking about that. Uh, the leading cause of disability in multiple sclerosis is cognitive impairment. And I think that in the future, all of us, neurologists, ophthalmologists, neuro-ophthalmologists, need to start measuring cognitive improvement, cognitive impairment rather, on optic neuritis patients earlier in their course. And if they have problems, then we need to follow that because it's such a stealth disease. You can have progression without relapses. And we have to make this a multi-dimensional approach uh, with the help of MS specialists, with the help of uh, specialists in neuropsychological testing for cognitive impairment. 